Hello again everybody, Michael here for Tactica Imperialis. Uh, this is part two of my little series concerning uh, tactics of 40k. Uh, I'm going to look at more Death Stars today, uh, particularly looking at the Eldar and Dark Eldar ones today. Uh, the Eldar and the Dark Eldar both have their own Death Star or Mini Star. Uh, the Eldar one is the Seer Council and the Dark Eldar one is the Beast Pack. The Seer Council consists of a far seer mounted on a jet bike with a squad of warlocks mounted on a jet bike, uh, possibly including Baron Sathenix as Dark Eldar allies. Uh, that's up to you. And it isn't the toughest Death Star out there because it's only toughness three or four, um, four, maybe three plus armor saves, average in vulnerables. It's not the toughest, but and it can't, isn't the hardest hitting probably out there because there are things that are much more powerful although they do have witch blades so bear that in mind they're quite high strength or quite powerful as far as I remember anyway um, but the real advantage of the Seer Council as you might suggest, expect from jet bikes is their speed these things are so 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 fast you can add in the fact that their Eldar jet bikes allows them to move even faster in the assault phase which is brilliant they all Mount underslung shuriken cannons, I think it is. I haven't got the new Eldar Codex, so I wouldn't know exactly what they mount. But it's one of the most common Death Stars that you see. The reason for this is it's not its speed, it's not its power, it's not its resilience, it's its psychic powers. A Seer Council on foot can wreak carnage with psychers. It has access to divination, all the Eldar powers like Doom, Fortune, Guide, all the other Eldar powers. Plus things like prescience, forewarning, perfect timing from divination, and possibly invisibility as well. So it can really lock in an enemy and really cause a problem. If it gets into melee, it can just keep casting these boost powers and these negative powers on the enemy. And there's nothing you can do to stop them. You can't deny the witch against blessing or and possibly malediction powers. So there's nothing you can do to stop them. And they're just going to boost and boost and boost until they're practically unstoppable. So what you have to hope is that they'll start failing psychic tests or that you don't engage them as best you can. You have to try and keep the jet star at arm's length. I know that's hard and I know it's fast and it can pick you off, but you need to shoot it down. You get into melee with it, it will start casting its powers and it will be practically untouchable. Only the real powerful resilient Death Stars can take a hit from this thing and still have the force left to go back and break through the barriers and kill it. So Drago Wings and Logan Wings are actually quite good against the Seer Council. The problem is the Seer Council can run rings around it. Um, Baron Sathenix I think adds boost to first turn and or sees the initiative rolls in these special rules. I'm not quite sure exactly what he has so I'd have to look that up in the Dark Eldar Codex um, and they can be really annoying so as I say shoot it down multiple small units perhaps here doesn't work as well as it does against other Death Stars because they can kill one unit with their psychics then move and kill another one then move and kill another one and then go and crash into an objective they're not troops at this time but they can still be damn annoying and they're not I don't know how expensive they actually are but I doubt they're up there, because usually they run alongside the mighty Eldar Wraith Knight, which everybody seems to hate these days, because it's so damn tough. Like, got toughness 8, 100 wounds, well, not 100 wounds, but a lot of wounds, really powerful guns like the Star Cannon, uh, no, sorry, Sun Cannon. It's in ridiculous how powerful the Wraith Knight is. Um, as I say, don't, tr well, do try and take it head on if you've got a unit that can kill it. But otherwise, try and pick it off with massed firepower because it will fail arms and you'll get through the negatives. Single shot weapons like LAS cannons and uh, melter guns might not be so effective because of all the negatives and trying to hit it. You need more shots. I'm not saying don't try, but I don't know if it's the most effective method you have. <laughs> uh, the Dark Eldar one is similar but different. It's still a fast Death Star, but it's not quite as fast. It's built around the Beast Pack. The Beast Pack is a Dark Eldar unit which consists of Beastmasters on jet bike, no, hoverboards, or skyboards I think they're called, uh, Chimerae, uh, Razorwing, Clawed Fiends, 
there may be a couple more in there, and they're really powerful again. A Chimera has got a lot of attacks and is very, very rapid. Razor Wings have got like Shred or Rending or something. Uh, Claw Fiends gain attacks as they lose wounds. They only have a couple, but this is really quite powerful. You can put them into angry mode, basically. The Beastmasters, I think, have access to some nice weaponry as well. You can add characters like Baron Sathanix in there as well for some more power. The problem that you have the Beastmaster star has in terms of surviving is it's not as survivable as the others. It's very fast because they're beasts and beasts can move quickly. Um, but it doesn't have the same survivability. I mean, Razor Wing flocks are swarms, so flamers and blast weights will rip them apart. Uh, Chimera, I don't think they're that tough. The Claude Fiends do offer some brute, but they're the more expensive and they are low wounds, even if they are quite tough. And I don't think their armor save is that good. And the same applies to the Beastmasters. They're only Eldar after all. Hitting them could be tricky because of their high speed, but if you can hit them with enough firepower, they'll go down. And this is one you don't want to engage in melee because it, it can just bring brute attacks, more and more attacks that you can deal with, and it will just pull you down before you can kill it, because they're all usually pretty high initiative as well. Um, there's not much more you can do with it, so with these two Death Stars, it's kind of like the Logan and Paladin Wing, but the opposite. So the advice is still bring it down, and try and not engage it in melee, but this time you can't run lots of small squads and think, oh, it won't get them all, because it might just. That's the worry. So big squads will probably, you can bog it down, as I've said before, you can bog it down with big units, but sometimes if you can blob, the Seer Council or the Beast Star is going to have to do a lot of work to get through it, whereas if it's a 10-man squad of Tac Marines or a 5-man squad of, um, what do you call them now, Tail Pathfinders or whatever else, it can get through them pretty quickly. Uh, again, they don't have the flyer potential that others have, that other units have, sorry, but... They have good backup units to do this. Dark Eldar have the Razor Wing. The Eldar have the, oh, what's it called? Crimson Hunter, which is a very good flyer killer. And there's all sorts of different things it can do. So, again, you've got to neutralise the support elements before you can pick it off. Uh, as I've said before, there are two ways to play a Death Star. One is kill it to the exclusion of all else. The other is avoid it entirely. With these ones, you can focus on it to the exclusion of all else because it will go down but it, avoiding it is hard so I'd recommend this one get rid of it but get rid of the supporting wave serpents or venoms that are just going to take advantage and if a beast star is held in reserve which could be done beware archons or characters carrying a webway portal because a webway portal allows the units that are in reserve to come on through the portal instead of on the board edge which means if a fast Archon on a jet bike or something can shoot up the board, throw down a webway port, and suddenly you've got a really powerful reserve hole right in your face, and you don't want that at all, particularly with shooting orientated armies. Um, that's about all for today. Uh, my next Death Star video will go on about the Necrons, because they have one mini Death Star and one full-size Death Star in terms of cost. But the mini star has a lot of power and is very commonly run. Um, if you have any opinions about the Seer Council, the Beast Star, uh, I'm obviously not an expert on the Eldar or the Dark Eldar, so I may get things wrong. I'm very sorry if I do, but I'm not perfect. Um, please feel free to let me know. Um, that's all I think for today. My name is Michael, and I'll see you again.